YouTube. It's one of the foundations of the internet. A storage house of content with everything from cat videos to news, movie trailers to music. But for some, it's where they make a living. They are known as YouTubers. They revel in this evolving form of communication and have made it their own. This is a look at three different creators who specialize in video game content. They have different approaches, different personalities, but share a craft in common. Understanding them takes us behind the you in YouTube. Ever ask yourself, why is my character bobbing up and down when I'm not doing anything? Seriously, in real life, if you saw anyone like that on the street, you'd... Well... <laughs> Oh, let's jump, boy! <laughs> In video games, these are called Idol Animations. These are the animations belonging to a character when they aren't doing anything. My name is Alex Carducci, and my channel's name is Relax Relax. I do gaming content that revolves around information and game design, but also has like a humorous touch to it. The main series I'm known for is a series called Know Your Moves, and it revolves around Super Smash Brothers, a Nintendo uh, fighting game that has all the characters from Mario, Pikachu, Kirby, The Legend of Zelda, and they all fight, and what I essentially do is I talk about the characters, where they're from, and how they're portrayed in this game, because it's, it's a game where a lot of people come together, and they all love it. Uh, average video that's part of the main series, there's the script and research, which can take quite a while. There's, uh, the research can go on for weeks, then I write the script for it, uh, edit the script to make it sound more fleshed out, more flow to it, then I record it, then I begin video editing, capturing footage for the videos, which revolve around playing a couple of video games, uh, and that can take weeks as well. The average video in the editing room could take up to 40 to 60 hours, depending on the length, and the length of my videos range from 10 to 20 minutes, so an average length video on my channel can take to a month. A lot of the time, one of the biggest things people ask you when you're a YouTuber is how do you get paid and how how does this happen? You make videos and you can get paid for it because it's interesting. And what it boils down to is advertisements on YouTube. Those can range from having a little banner on the side of the video or at the beginning of your video, uh, video plays from a sponsor, and all of those help pay the YouTuber making the video. It can get really muddy as to how much you can make per advertisement. But these days, it goes by watch minutes. So if a user is watching through your video for longer, that means that they're being exposed to the advertisement for longer. Thus, they're gonna pay you out more for that view. YouTube pays its content creators roughly about $1 per 1,000 views. However, that $1 amount fluctuates quite a bit depending on the time of the year. Sometimes 1,000 views is worth 50 cents, and sometimes it's worth $7. This is called CPM which means the cost per 1,000 views. A lot of YouTubers talk about how January is a bad month for getting paid because the CPM is bad. Good months like December where it's Christmas and Boxing Day and people, advertisers are trying to get people to look at their products so they go buy it. That month people are making a lot of money because their advertisements on their videos are doing really good. While only about $1 per 1,000 views doesn't sound like much, According to Social Blade, a website dedicated to the monitoring and projection of YouTubers' viewership and monetary analytics, the top five YouTubers make between $26,000 to $416,000 every single month on average. YouTube's a game at the end of the day. You have to play it or you lose. It's kind of like Game of Thrones. <laughs> Now here's the work of another YouTuber. He's called Exploding TNT and his videos are geared for kids. His story includes two big factors. One, his viewership is huge. And two, Exploding TNT's identity is a mystery.
Hello, my name is Sam and I'm a 20-year-old Canadian guy who loves Tim Hortons. I run a couple of YouTube channels that I started back when I was still in elementary middle school. The main channel that I run is called Exploding TNT, which is mainly focused on a game called Minecraft. On Exploding TNT, I have around 3.8 million subscribers with almost 1 billion total video views. So one of the craziest things about Exploding TNT is even though he has just under 4 million subscribers over his 5 years of being on YouTube, he has never once revealed his voice or face. While he agreed to an interview, in order to not tip his identity, we decided to have our interview over text, which is being narrated by the voice you heard before. What you see in place of Exploding TNT is his own unique persona that he uses to represent himself online. So I'm probably one of the biggest YouTubers that still has yet to reveal myself. I have always been careful with showing myself on the internet from when I was really young, and never really planned to do so. Probably because I've always been a pretty shy person. I obviously wasn't expecting to get to the point where I almost have 4 million subscribers on YouTube, but so far things have gone well without needing to reveal myself so let's just hope it stays that way. So what is Minecraft, if you somehow have never seen this game? Think of it as a Lego type of game where you build with blocks, create items, survive, and pretty much do whatever you want, that is the main reason it got so popular, because you can pretty much do anything you want in the game. For my videos, I create little skits using Minecraft. Basically I plan out a creative story that is usually based off Minecraft itself. For example, a lot of my videos start with if such as if Minecraft was a first-person shooter, or if famous people played Minecraft. It can be compared to a cartoon like Spongebob for example, we have those characters that are completely clueless and do wacky things all day, and others that are smarter and more straightforward. The thing that takes the most time in making my videos is the planning brainstorming of the idea. It is usually hard to think of something that you think would be funny enough to entertain possibly millions of kids. I like to write down every single shot and what type of music I will use for that specific scene prior to recording anything to make my life easier afterwards. After that is done, the rest of it is pretty straightforward. I just get some people to act as body actors while I record them, then I edit and that's pretty much it. The entire process usually takes around 20 hours I would say, sometimes shorter if the idea is simple, sometimes longer if I'm having trouble coming up with something. I try to do two videos each week. I'm still learning as I go, I'd like to do more branded videos and have more sponsorships going on, but it is a little bit harder for me because of the type of my content, I have worked with a few companies in the past such as DreamWorks and Loochcrate, so I know how beneficial it can be, I'm happy with the characters I have created and think that I can be successful if I continue to go in this direction. While attending PAX East 2017, a large video game convention for game designers and game fans alike, I got a chance to have an interview with Vinny from the YouTube and Twitch.tv channel Vinesauce. Twitch is a website similar to YouTube, however, it focuses on live video content instead of edited content. Vinny Vinesauce is the owner of three content creating outlets, encompassing two YouTube channels and a channel on the website Twitch.tv where Vinny streams himself live to his viewers at home. You can do it! You can do it, truck! <laughs> what is this? Okay. <laughs> is this person tub? Why is it homing? Why is everything homing, including a bridge? Some of them look a little, uh, I don't know, like they got into a car accident. Like this face right here, that doesn't look much like a face. All right, so I'm Vinny from Vine Sauce. Um, my YouTube channel is Vine Sauce, and I have another one called uh, Vine Sauce Full Sauce, which is just full streams. Um, I've been streaming for seven years. I've been doing YouTube for seven years. And um, generally, I'm known for corruptions, which are forced video game glitches. So, basically breaking video games in such a way that people wonder if it's intentional or not. For me, it's intentional. Um, most people seem to really enjoy that stuff. Uh, the glitches are really popular. There's also, uh, I play really bad games, really weird games, a lot of Mario games, Zelda games. And uh, I'd say it's still though, glitches. People really like that. Well, I used to make more videos 
and you need to have a script. You need to plan. You need to be a little bit more um, prepared. With editing, you can make even live stuff seem scripted, but these days I'm more into just kind of off the cuff, spur of the moment, and uh, I tend to get my best stuff out of that, and I tend to work better under pressure, and it takes less time overall than actually sitting and writing and then editing. So when you're live, any number of things can go wrong. Internet, the program, the game. Uh, what, 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 what? I'm sorry, what? What is this happening? There's any number of things, and it usually does. But I tell people, if I can, to just hang out and wait, and then, you know, I come back and usually it's fine but you just soldier through it, you make a joke out of it, you carry on. One of the glaring differences between an edited YouTube video and a live broadcast on Twitch.tv is the chat section. The chat is comprised of a live stream's active viewers, where they can talk and send messages to themselves and the streamer. Sometimes having a live chat is very helpful to the streamer, as it provides immediate feedback to their actions. However, sometimes that live feedback can add a new level of pressure to the content creator. Well, the chat gives a lot of feedback. Um, some of it's extremely unwelcome. Some of it's very good. Yeah, that Vinesaw stream fucking sucked. Garbage. He played a bunch of fucking garbage tonight. He's not funny. He thinks he's funny. He even gave a fucking chameleon shit posting a voice. It was fucking terrible. Um, a lot of times I will get hints for games I'm playing. They'll tell me about something I never knew. Sometimes they can be extremely informative. Sometimes they can be really nasty. Sometimes they can be extremely malicious. There are times um, I'll be playing a game and they'll, they'll tell me about a thing to go do in the game that's just not real. Um, you kind of have to take the good with the bad when it comes to a giant chat room. So it can be challenging until you learn how to deal with it. And then you have to let the criticisms kind of just bounce off of you. That takes a few years. So I actually hired someone from the community that was an exceptionally good editor. His name is Captain Southbird. He's excellent. I hired him to, um, once a week, uh, cut down some of my full live streams into shorter videos, eight to 10 minutes. And they usually bring in new viewers because you know, attention spans work eight to 10 minutes is perfect. Whereas a two hour full stream, that's a lot harder to pay attention to if you don't know who the guy is. Every night, those live streams get put to one channel, which is the full stream channel, and then um, the cut down videos go to my main channel, which is just called Vine Sauce. And it works out really well. It's a good combo. I would say, in terms of business, um, the split would be about, for both YouTube channels, 60% or more for YouTube, and then maybe 40% for Twitch. These days, it's just so hard. There's like a, a blurring effect where everyone can be a part of it. You know, seven years ago when I started, Twitch did not exist. So it was such a niche audience. You had to kind of forge your own way and you did not get promotion easily. You know, be yourself or be a character, but do either one exceptionally well. Um, and enjoy it. People pick up on if you're not enjoying it. That's that's one of the things I've learned. If I'm not enjoying a game, my audience knows it. And when I am enjoying the game, it's it's better for them. Or, conversely, if the game is absolutely terrible, my extreme disgust and hatred for the game usually makes people laugh as well. In a sense, online video content is a massive force with staggering numbers. Alex, Sam, and Vinny are just three examples of the 1.3 billion users of YouTube and are just a drop in the ocean that is the 300 hours of video content that is uploaded to YouTube every single minute. But these three individuals are proof that this is something pretty big. This job is one that lets a dedicated video game fan share the fun facts he's dug up about his favorite game with the world. It's a job that lets a person talk for hours and hours to a roaring crowd of words and expressions. It's a job so powerful that a faceless person can produce a five minute video that makes billions of kids smile and laugh all around the world. So, who's the next hot creator? Well, that's the thing about YouTube. If you put in the work, it might just be you.